Welcome back to the Mayo Clinic Radio. I'm Dr. Sanj Kakar. And I'm Tracy McRae. Faster and cheaper genetic testing is helping change the way we treat and prevent cancer. Gathering genetic information can help patients receive treatment that is better tailored to their disease, thereby making it more effective. Cancer patients can also find out if they have a hereditary trait that could be passed on to children or grandchildren, giving parents and families a leg up on preventing hereditary cancers. Joining us on the phone to discuss genetic testing is Dr. Douglas Riegert, who leads the Hereditary Cancer Clinic on Mayo Clinic's Florida campus. Good morning, Dr. Riegert. Welcome to the program. Good morning. Thank you for having me. Dr. Riegert, uh, just uh, going back how this all developed, with all the environmental factors that cause cancer, for example, smoking, how did this program come about, about genetic testing for cancers? This program came about... uh, because it was found that some families had a very high rate of cancer at a very young age that wasn't explained by environmental factors. What types of cancer, are there specific types of cancer that are hereditary, like a lymphoma or? I would say at this point, we've found hereditary cancers of every type, ranging from lymphoma to melanoma, colon cancer, and breast cancer, uh, the most, the uh, common or one of the most common in the earliest described form of hereditary cancer was hereditary colon cancer. Why is it that you, I'm not the doctor here, so why is it that some cancers are more likely to be a hereditary type than others? Some uh, cancers uh, are primarily caused uh, by environmental toxins, could be melanoma from UV radiation, could be lung cancer from smoking, mesothelioma from asbestos. Uh, Other cancers uh, are kept in check by genes which prevent cancers from forming. And when those genes are broken, uh, patients, uh, due to hereditary traits, patients are at an increased risk for cancer. You reeled off a number of uh, cancers uh, a minute ago. Are there ones in particular that have a stronger uh, preponderance in terms of genetic uh, background? Yes, I would say um, it would uh, would in, on one end of the spectrum would be breast and ovarian cancer. Approximately 10% of people at breast or ovarian cancer have a hereditary component. And then there would be a middle ground with colon cancer and other cancers, about 5%. And then uh, on the other end of the spectrum, where there's a low but still positive uh, uh, incidence of hereditary traits, uh, would be melanoma and a few other cancers. You had said uh, just a moment ago that there are genes that prevent cancers from forming. So people that get cancer maybe don't have that gene or something has happened to that gene. Is that more often what's happening, genes that prevent the cancer from forming? Or like you just said, there's some that do have, that can that could lead to cancer. Which happens more often? The most uh, often event would be a genes that suppress cancer, or tumor suppressor genes are broken. Uh, on the other end of the spectrum, there are less common syndromes where there are genes that are activated, uh, and those are cancer genes or oncogenes. That's amazing. <laughs> it, it is. So, Dr. Riga, can you just then describe uh, what is your protocol for testing? For example, do you screen for everybody, or do you look for a family history? How do you determine which patients are applicable for this genetic testing? So, um there are many issues involved with uh, genetic testing. Uh, people are concerned about uh, inheritance patterns. They're concerned about genetic discrimination. Uh, they're concerned about cost. That's not as much factor as it was. So patients come to the clinic. We are non-directive. Uh, take a personal and uh, very comprehensive, drawn-out family tree uh, history. And then we uh, tell them what uh, tests are available what their odds of having a positive test are and what the, the value of the testing to them would be. And then patients decide uh, whether they want to have testing or not. The uptake on testing in the clinic is about probably 70%. So 30% of people opt for testing, uh, excuse me, 30% of people don't want to have testing and about 70% do at this point. This has come a long way really fast in five or 10 years And I remember the first time that I heard about this even being part of a conversation, it was, we don't know how much patients want to know or should Mm -hmm. know or how much they can handle. 
And I know that genetic uh, counselors are part of that as well. I would have to imagine that you're working with them too. Absolutely. We have two genetic counselors here at Mayo Clinic, Florida. I, uh, going to back to your other point, uh, I would say two key developments have led to increased genetic testing for hereditary cancer traits. The first would be uh, something the Mayo Clinic was a part of, uh, we can be proud of at the Mayo Clinic, um, and that is in the past, the patent office had allowed people to patent genetic information. And so someone would patent a gene, and then they would have monopoly on it. So they would say, if you want to test this gene, you have to pay me X amount of dollars. Mm. Or you can't test this gene. I won't allow you to. I've sold the rights to someone else. Mm. The Mayo Clinic and a group of geneticists sued uh, one of the companies that had one of these patents and took the case all the way to the Supreme Court. And the Supreme Court invalidated patents on genetic testing. Wow. The second development uh, was that um, two different companies invented new technology, which was much, which is much less expensive to do genetic testing. So within a year, cost for hereditary breast cancer dropped from around thirty-two hundred dollars to a thousand dollars. Wow. Um, another advent has been uh, on the on the non-technical end, the non-cost end would be in the past people were primarily being tested for knowing their own risk and then their children's risk, it didn't change their immediate cancer treatment. But uh, for both breast and ovarian and now uh, colon, if you have one of these hereditary traits, you receive a different, more effective chemotherapy than if you didn't. So it changes your personal treatment, not only your uh, understanding of your cancer risk and your children's cancer risk. And all, all of those factors have come together to really uh, – form you know, a nexus for increasing testing. You just mentioned what my next question was going to be, and that has to do with the treatment. So understanding that genetics can uh, change change the treatment um, for breast cancer or something of that like, uh, what about um, preventing further cancer? Does that does it help in that area as well? Uh, yes, it does. I'll give, uh, uh, give you an example from hereditary breast cancer. So a study from England showed that if women have hereditary breast cancer and they simply have uh, a lumpectomy or um, partial, you know, partial uh, breast removal, and then it compared them to women who went and had uh, prophylactic uh, mastectomies on both sides when they had the cancer diagnosis. They compared the survival between the limit, patients with limited surgery and those with more extensive surgery 20 years later. The survival rate of the women having more extensive surgery was 60%. The survival rate of women having the limited surgery, leaving more breast tissue to form cancer, was 40%. There's a 20% difference in the long-term survival. Um, so it definitely informs risk. Most women in the United States will, uh, if, if not now, or I would say now, have testing for hereditary traits uh, even prior to surgery um, to help guide treatment. Now, Dr. Regat, we're, we're talking about the patient, but if uh, how do you deal with the family? For example, if the patient has a hereditary cancer, how do you speak to family members about them potentially undergoing testing? Uh, so, uh, it's, as you know, it's important to treat every patient as their own individual patient. Mm -hmm. So, uh, first thing we do is we uh, uh, let uh, family members know they should tell other family members. Then when other family members contact us, we see them, you know, uh, as their own individual patient um, uh, with other family members if they like or not and give them their own counseling session. Interestingly enough, when people have a relative diagnosed with one of these cancer syndromes and, and they are told that they're at a 1 in 2 or 50% chance, like they usually would be, the uptake rate on testing is actually less than what I told you initially. It's, it's actually 50% or less. Um, that it, it's very variable how much value people see in the testing based on their own personal experiences and, um, si and uh, situation. Yeah. Why, why, do you, why do you think that is? I think, uh, first off, um, one thing that comes to mind is the insurance. So people, some people say, I could afford the cost of test, but if the test, if I have a positive test result, I need to have yearly uh, MRIs or of the breast, uh, uh, and I can't afford that. I don't have health insurance. Um, second group of people 
say, uh, you may say the risk is 50% that I'll have hereditary, that I'll have breast cancer, but I'm seeing that as, you know, good odds. That's 50%. I won't have breast cancer. Right. So, um, another group of, another group of people, uh, going, you know, a smaller group of people are people who are concerned about genetic testing. There are people who feel genetic testing is, uh, somehow invades their privacy. They don't want to be labeled. Mm-hmm. Um, and people uh, oftentimes, you know, now doing this here in Florida for 10 years, um, I found that people change their minds. People sure. who didn't, who made one decision five years ago, not infrequently they come back to the office and make a different decision. Um, we have thir- thir- we have 30 seconds left. Can you tell me what is next in the f- um, what's next in the field of genetics or hereditary cancers? The next big thing would be that everyone will be offered hereditary uh, cancer testing at a very low price hmm. um, it, as a, a directly to consumer. There are companies that have already formed to that, and they're already in motion to offer direct to consumer hereditary cancer testing. Wow. We've been discussing hereditary cancers with Dr. Douglas Riegert, who heads the, who leads the Hereditary Cancer Clinic on Mayo Clinic's Florida campus. Thanks so much for joining us, Dr. Riegert. Thank you for having me.